All right, got a brief comparison here between the Rock Bros uh, bike mount here. This is a single bike, and the Sea Sucker Talon, also a single bike mount. Looking at the differences here between both their design and obviously their price point, it's going to be the biggest thing. So, don't have a ton of use on the newer Rock Bros. I've used it a couple times attaching it to the vehicle, so I have some thoughts as to how it works. I've had the Sea Sucker here for years at this point. Um, and it's been a very solid rack, but went with the Rock Bros recently because it's about half the price. I think that was just under $150 on Amazon when I purchased it. This one with the uh, kind of plugs here, I believe I paid just over $300. Obviously, getting the plugs for the Rock Bros would bring the price up a little bit as well. This one, we just needed the, th the quick axle mount because we weren't using it on a high-end bike. Whereas this one I use on a full suspension mountain bike. This has been a very solid rack for me. This is uh, their talon, obviously, with the three suckers positioned in this pattern. I find that this allows for a little bit more flexibility with mounting as far as width. A lot of newer cars, modern cars, have antennas and stuff on the roof. So having this more narrow width is sometimes beneficial. But at the same time, I've heard some people prefer this mount if you have something like a sunroof and would like to put all of the suckers onto that. Um, this will allow you to either sit in front of or behind the sunroof, so just something to consider. Whereas this rack, obviously, two suckers may be on the windscreen, and then the third one is on the, the metal roof, or vice versa. In any case, the Sea Sucker has a good design in that it's this uh, thick plastic that's been uh, CNC machined. So this will actually flex to allow conformity to the surface, as will the Rock Bros but not nearly to the same degree. This is just a big piece of aluminum that's kind of been finished and then screwed into. So these uh, suckers have been attached to this single piece of aluminum. I'm guessing this is the cheaper solution. Obviously there's a lot less finish work. They just take an extruded piece of aluminum like this and then they uh, go around it with some type of router or something similar. Not 100% in the industry, so I won't know everything regarding that, but looks much cheaper to manufacture than the sea sucker here. With the Sea Sucker, you also have the option to get the more premium rear tire mount. In this case, it uses a cookie ratchety type strap to hold the rear tire, like a lot of the uh, more expensive bike mounts do. I'm thinking like a Thule. Um, they'll use this to attach the rear, the rear tire to their mounts. So it's a little bit nicer than the Velcro, I think. It won't wear down as quickly. That Velcro, obviously, the concern there is going to be after how many attachments you can have with a bike if you're using that frequently it's probably gonna degrade the Velcro quality a little bit. So that's what we're looking at here on, on the uh, Rock Bros. It's got the cheaper Velcro attachment system. Honestly though, I haven't had any issues with this as of yet, and it's got a lot of overlap on the Velcro. So if you can see all that overlap on there, um, not super worried then about it coming loose, but just not quite as nice as the Sea Sucker solution. The Sea Sucker has a much larger rear tire mount as well. The width on there will accommodate uh, a wider tire much nicer than this more narrow Rock Bros mount. So the main reason the Sea Sucker costs twice as much is likely because it's made in America, whereas the Rock Bros is uh, from China imported. So the Sea Sucker was kind of the original idea as well. This was, as far as I understand it, originally more of a marine applications. They made these uh, suction cups that were super long lasting and durable in all sorts of like uh, rough conditions as far as sunlight, UV exposure, uh, sea salt, things like that. So they were stainless hardware, they wouldn't rust. And then they thought, oh yeah, this can, this could hold a bike. You know, I don't know how exactly that idea comes about, but it works really well. As, as I said, I've had this for a few years, haven't had any issues with the Sea Sucker version. Occasionally, the only thing I will say is that these uh, pumps here need to be lubricated. Sometimes the check valve's in there. So the check valve exists inside the pump to stop air from leaking back into the vacuum pad. And occasionally those check valves would get a little uh, finicky and it, they, I've never had a pad come loose or anything, but it just kind of, it would take a, more and more pumps to get the initial seal that you would have with these. So instead of say 10 to 20 pumps, you'd be sit sitting there for 30 pumps and this uh, little arm here would never really fully depress like it is now. It would get stuck, say, somewhere around here. And you could keep pumping 
but not all of the air would ever escape. So, but that quick solution for that is just pull these out and they include lubricant in the uh, packaging for the sea sucker. So you can just kind of clean that out pretty easily, run some water through it, let it dry out really good. And then it's basically brand new. I've had a single issue with uh, one of these pumps failing. And even if it did, they include an extra pump in the package. So these can be replaced really easily by just removing this top screw and then removing the four Phillips head screws that go into each pad. So this will show that a little better. On the rear mount, you can just remove these four Phillips head screws, pull this cover off, and then underneath that will be this vacuum pump, which in turn just pulls right out of the pad. And then you can replace this pump if need be. But as I said, I've had this for a couple years now and I haven't had to replace a pump. I have had to lubricate them, but that's basically just standard maintenance. And to be honest, you'll likely have to do that regardless of what model you buy. The Rock Bros also comes with like a very, like it's a very um, similar design. I'm gonna say they probably just copied them. So Rock Rose has a very, very similar design. It's very likely that they just bought this unit and cloned it to make their own. I don't know that for a fact, but just based on how everything fits together, this whole spacing, for instance, is identical. The pump dimensions are nearly identical. So technically I've tried this. You can remove this and bolt this upper unit onto this vacuum pad. Now I don't know if it would seal 100% perfectly, but I do know that the spacing is such that they, they, they will fit one to the other. So as far as things that I like about the Sea Sucker better, so Sea Sucker's on the right over here, probably on the left of the video, and the, this is the Rock Bros. The thing that I like the most about the Sea Sucker is the pad quality is really high, and also they include these little tabs. So these little tabs on the edge here allow for easy pad removal. You just lift this up, and it breaks the vacuum seal, and you can remove it. The Rock Bros doesn't have those uh, little lips at all. They just have a smooth pad all the way around. And then also the Rock Bros has this extra lip in here and a very glossy surface. And this seals really well. So in order to um, remove these pads, you basically just have to reach your fingers under and rip them off. It's not a huge deal. It's just a little bit more work to remove these than it is to remove the Sea Sucker pads. Uh, both pads otherwise seem pretty high quality. Both seem pretty high quality. They're clearly using different materials though. The Rock Bros obviously has the glossy surface and the Sea Sucker has a more matte finish uh, rubber material. And also the kind of the holes inside the Sea Sucker that I think work to redistribute the air within the pad so that when it's fully sealed, those grooves allow air in the vacuum to be consistent across the whole uh, ceiling surface as opposed to just underneath the pad. Whereas the holes on here are similar, the grooves, if you will, but they're not nearly as deep. So I wonder if the Sea Sucker version has more equal ceiling pressure than the Rock Rose version. Obviously, I don't know how to test that, but uh, something to consider that this is probably a little bit higher quality design as this is the original. So I have removed these from the kind of front mount here. I removed each pad individually. And what I found was when I was removing these vacuum sealed pads, some of these threaded inserts on the rock rows that goes into the pad, they're just inlaid inside this rubber and I've had some spinning issues. So I wasn't able to remove all of the hardware from this because it was either in too tight from the factory or this, the insert inside was never seated appropriately inside the rubber. So basically the insert will just spin and the bolt won't come out. Uh, on the Sea Sucker, I haven't had that issue. The Sea Sucker's hardware's all been top quality and very easy to remove. Additionally, the bolts are all the correct size and the included wrench fits well. The issue with the Rock Bros I've had is that the included wrench for um, attaching some of the hardware, specifically the nuts for this uh, kind of front wheel mount here, they included a 10 millimeter wrench, but it's not, it's not appropriately sized. It's very loose on there. I ended up using my own 10 millimeter wrench, which fit perfectly. So I think the issue is just the, uh, the cheap wrench included to assemble. And additionally, the Allen keys included were of lower quality than that of the Sea Sucker, but that's to be expected. If you're paying twice as much for a product, I would expect that it's going to be higher quality than the inferior version. That's half the cost. I mean, that's just kind of, 
you know, what you'd expect. Whether or not there's two times the value here is up for debate, I think, still. One other thing I wanted to note here was that these the vacuum uh, kind of pumps in the, sea, in the sea sucker are higher quality than those in the rock bros. This is a rock bros. This is a painted on white line. So this white line was just painted on from the factory. And these assemble and disassemble the same exact way. So that's the, that's the rock bros. And this is the sea sucker. Same thing, sounds the same, feels the same. But this is an overmolded or a separate molded piece of orange plastic. So this isn't going to wear off. And also it's much longer. Like this is going to alert you to low pressure sooner than the rock bros. So, so if you can see that there. They are almost identical. But the rock bros is... A little more cons or a little more aggressive, I'd say, with their low pressure. They don't they don't alert you as quickly if the oh and they squeak. They don't alert you as quickly if this is coming up, whereas the sea sucker has a large overmolded orange piece of plastic that'll notify you sooner and has tighter tolerances. So I think this one requires this to be further down before it shows you a band, which you can see here. So as you can see, the sea sucker will tell you about a low pressure before the rock bros will. Yeah, just listen to this. Sounds like a bird call or something. Whereas the sea sucker doesn't make any noise. This is incoherent rambling, so I hope some of this made sense. Uh, as far as final thoughts, I think the sea sucker is the higher quality product. It's the original design. It just seems to be made to with better mold better mold quality, uh, better overall attention to detail, and better finishing as far as CNC is concerned. The uh, Rock Bros isn't terrible, but has a few rough edges. The um, Sea Sucker then is the one that I'm gonna use for my expensive bike. I mean, if your bike's, you know, you're riding on a $2,000 bike or something, I don't think $300 for peace of mind on a nice high quality rack made in the USA is outlandish. Uh, for my wife's bike, it was only 500 bucks. Having any issues with the Rock Bros. I mean, I'm sure it'll hold up just fine, but just for peace of mind and warranty support, I know I can get Sea Sucker parts. I know I can buy new vacuum pads. I've reached out to them and they offered, you know, immediate customer service. Like email was easy to get back and forth. I wasn't waiting to hear back from them. So I think that's all worth something. Whether or not it's worth $150 to you, that's going to depend. But to me, I think just for the... For the level of bike I'm using, it was worth it. Again, I ended up going with a cheaper rack the second time just because I knew it was only going to be used on a $500 bike. So if your bike is a little bit on that cheaper end, you're just going to use it occasionally. I only plan on using this maybe the Rock Bros. I only plan on using that a few times a year, whereas the Sea Sucker in the summers I'll use a few times a week. So just from a durability perspective, I've had no issues with the Sea Sucker. It's a known entity, and I think I trust that a little bit more with my more expensive bike, whereas the Rock Bros, I know it's not gonna get as much use and it has worked well the times that I've used it. So I think it's a good product. It's just not quite as nicely finished and probably I haven't had to reach out to their warranty department, but I'm, I'm guessing it's not gonna be as easy to contact as Sea Sucker is just because I know Sea Sucker's based in the United States as far as their warranty department and they were very quick to respond. So it's a pretty good bar to be set.